Hey everybody, it's Chris here with Off-Road Farm, and I think we're finally ready to start shortening this truck frame. So why are we going to shorten it? Well, it's long, like really long. In case you've forgotten, it's an 88 crew cab long wheelbase. Just how long is it? Well, I had some help to measure, and from front hub to rear hub, it's 165 and a half inches. That's 13 feet, nine and a half inches long. So we're going to see just how much we can shorten it up. So let's have a look down here at the frame in between the cab and the rear axle. All right, so here's the frame in between the cab. This is the front bracket for the leaf spring. You can see a couple places here where I've cleaned the frame. And this was just some of the different options that I was looking at. So basically, if I went between the two cleaned off places that I've made here, I'm gonna get roughly about 16 inches out of there. So 16 inches is okay, but I was really hoping to get a little bit more because of the length of the drive shaft, and we'll see that in just a minute. I think what I can do, so I think I can actually go split this rearmost cab mount, go right between it, and I'm actually going to end up getting close to two feet. I think I can get somewhere between 22 to 24 inches, depending on exactly where I have to cut. I'm going to have to look at the bottom of the frame and see where it starts to flare down, and that'll kind of decide where I'm going to make my cut. So it's going to be a little bit more work, because if I just did it back here, I can simply just support it, cut it, cut it, scoot it forward, and weld it back. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to loosen all the cab mounts, jack up the back of the cab, take out these mounts, remove this cross brace here, uh, knock off these all these rivets, cut my frame, move everything back up, weld it together, and then I'll have these three, I should have these three existing holes here where I can remount my cab mount so I know where I need to drill these three holes. And then I can put a plate on it to reinforce everything. A Little bit more work, but I'm gonna end up gaining anywhere from six to eight inches. Um, and I think that's gonna be important because of the length of the drive shaft and we'll see those in just a minute. Okay, so here's the drive shaft. So as you can tell, obviously it's a two piece drive shaft and it is long. It is so long, I actually, even with my tripod at the highest setting, as tall as it would go, I still couldn't get the whole thing in one shot. So let's measure it and see just how long it is. All right, so with the slip yoke approximately in the middle, let's take a look. What is that? It's right at 98 inches. Wow, that's a lot of drive shaft. All right, so you've seen how long everything is. Now you know why I'm trying to shorten this up as much as I can. We want to try to get rid of that slip yoke if we can. Um, you know, they're not very desirable because they have a really short travel. Um, you know, if you have any kind of droop in your rear end, it'll pop right off. Um, I mean, most XJs come with that and almost every four wheel drive company sells a slip yoke eliminator kit. So we're gonna try to get everything as short as possible, uh, lose the slip yoke, go down to just one drive shaft and try to get it in a more manageable length. So if I can lose 20-ish inches, um, you know, that measured out at 98, if we can lose 22, that gets me down to 76. And then by the time I add in a doubler of some kind, I haven't decided what I'm gonna go with yet, either like the Magnum from ORD or maybe like a 203, 205 doubler. I think if you're looking anywhere from like six to 11-ish inches, that's gonna scoot your transfer case farther back. So that'll give me a few more inches too. And maybe we can get the rear drive shaft somewhere around 70 inches something just a little bit more manageable um, and it's going to perform a little bit better. So let's get started doing what we got to do so we can start cutting this frame. All right, so first thing, I'm just going to remove this cross brace.
All right, now we're gonna crawl underneath the cab and loosen all the cab bolts. All the cab bolts are loosened. So now let's try to jack this up just a little bit. So keep in mind that we need to loosen all of the cab mount bolts, even the ones up towards the front so that way we have enough wiggle room that we can actually jack the back end of this cab up. Also keep in mind if you have not had your cab mount bolts loose recently we need to break those loose with a breaker bar not an impact wrench. We don't want to spin that captive nut in there and create a whole lot more work for us. Well so we've got these loose and the weights off of them. So I just have these blocks in here temporarily. I guess I'm gonna to have to make a piece to go from the floor up. There's a solid piece on this cab support back here that I can go to to keep that jacked up while I cut everything and move everything around because I might need my floor jack so I don't wanna leave it underneath there. So let's measure for that. Overall height needs to be 33 and 3 sixteenths. So I found a couple pieces of scrap here. We're gonna try to tack these together to make a stand to hold the rear of the cab jacked up so I can get in there and cut the frame and work on the cab mount. when you have the welder set up for 230 volt if you actually put the 230 volt plug on it. So nothing fancy here, I'm just trying to make a stand to hold the rear of this cab up. I'm not completely welding this, I'm just giving a couple stitches on each side just to kind of hold everything in place while I jack up that cab and while I work on this frame. The last thing I'm going to do on this little brace is I'm, I have these old rivet heads that I knocked off on some exhaust brackets. I'm just going to tack these on the outside edge just to keep it from sliding out. Almost got the brace into position. I'm just going to take my time here and make sure that I get this brace in nice and plumb in both directions. That's going to help it be a lot more stable. Let's see what happens when I lower the jack.
So I finally had a chance to get everything cleaned up. I got all the fuel lines out of the way. There was a bunch of electrical stuff. This had dual tanks, so over here on the passenger side, the switch valve was over there. Um, I moved all that stuff out. Over on the passenger side, there was a weird 12-3 multi-strand, 300 volt wire ran. I have no idea what that was for. All the other automotive wires were over on the driver's side. But it's cleaned up. So now we can start worrying about these cab mounts. We're gonna start knocking these rivets out. We hope. Now remember if you're gonna be running an air chisel, I highly recommend earplugs and definitely have to have some sort of eye face protection. So I had a little bit of trouble with this first rivet. I think my angle was just a little bit too steep. Um, after I knocked this one out, the rest of them, I actually shallowed that angle up quite a bit and they actually came off really easy. After we get all the rivets knocked off, now we're just gonna change out to a punch bit in our air chisel, and we're just gonna punch them out of the frame so we can get our bracket out. Well, that went pretty good, pretty easy. So I'm just gonna do the same exact thing over here to the passenger side and get that bracket out of the way. So you might run into this problem where you cut all the rivets off with your air chisel, but they're still stuck in the bracket, but it comes out of the frame. That's real easy. All I did was just get a big piece of thick, heavy steel. We can set it up there and then we'll just use the air chisel, but this time with a hammer bit in it to just knock these out. We don't want to set it on something like that and then try to hit it. We could deform, bend this bracket up. All right, so there's our two brackets free. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean these up, try to get a coat of paint on them, so that way they can be drying while I'm working on the frame. I've got the front wheels chopped, front and back. Now I'm getting ready. We're just gonna put some jack stands and try to get this thing supported before we start cutting. So I have jack stands underneath both sides. Of course, the jack stands aren't the perfect height but we don't want to jack the frame up, move the jack stand up a notch and then bring it down. Because we want the frame to try to be just sitting level. So instead I got it as close as I could and then I just went and I cut some wood shims. And I'm just gonna knock these in here just so that they're tight. All my jack stands are in place. I've got everything marked and measured. I used a couple different, I used a framing square and a combination square. And after I got done doing that, I made sure to take measurements from a certain bolt to all my different cut marks to make sure everything was pretty square and in the same place. Everything was real close. I only had a tiny little adjustment. I was a 16th off. And I've got that fixed. Now we're ready to start making the actual cuts. So I'm just using a metal blade and a sawzall. I think it was the Linux brand that I was using, just their metal cutting blades. Just keep in mind, go slow, take your time so you can get a nice straight cut. And if the blade looks wore out, just change it. After we get everything cut, we're just going to hit it with a flap disc. We're going to clean up all the edges. Then we're going to clean off both sides of the frame. 
where we cut so we can get that paint or that coating off so we can get a nice good weld with no contaminants. Now after we get these edges cleaned up, we're going to push the back of the frame forward. We're going to take a look and see how our fitment is. If our fitment's not perfect, and mine wasn't on the passenger side frame rail, we will just want to do a little bit at a time so we don't take off too much and then we're just chasing it back and forth. So we're almost ready to start welding, but before that, we need to get everything into position. So we've got two ratchet straps here tied to the back half, pulling it tight up against the front half of the frame. I've also got some nice big heavy pieces of steel that I've clamped on there to help keep everything straight and in line. Now before we actually start our welding, now is when we want to start taking measurements. When we want to redo all of our measurements we did before our cuts and make sure that that back half of that frame is square and that everything lines up because we don't want to have it crooked. After we weld it's going to be a lot harder to fix. Alright so as far as the welder setup, uh, since this is thicker material I have set it up on the 220 volt plug and as far as the actual setup of the machine what I recommend is follow the chart so follow the chart that's on your welder uh, so we're going uh, 230 and we have 75 25 mix 35 thousandths wire and we're gonna come over here to 3 16 that's how thick the frame is so we're gonna set it up on 6 and 40 I'm not a certified welder. I don't weld for a living. I just piddle with it around on the farm. So before I weld the actual frame, I'm gonna practice on some of the scrap. I just took it over to the bandsaw, cut a piece of it off. This way I can play with all my settings on my welder, get it right before I go to the actual frame and I know it's going to weld decently. I also want to point out here if you notice I'm welding this in the vertical position so that way I can get more practice with how this is going to react when I'm actually welding it for real. What I don't want to do is lay it down flat and I practice welding it like that because that's, that's not, not how I'm going to be welding it here in just a minute when I'm actually welding it on the truck. So, you know, I'm trying, hey, how, how is it going to weld on the top rail? How is it going to uh, weld on the side? And then I also did some overhead, how is it going to weld on that bottom flange? So that way I know my settings are right or if I need to play with them a little bit in between those. So every time I try to film, it starts raining. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna put a tack on each side and then go from there. Now that I've got it tacked at the bottom, or towards the bottom, I'm gonna move my st flat straight edges that I have clamped on the sides up to the top, reclamp them and put a tack up there. All right, here's the second tack up top. So it's now all tack welded up. We've got two tacks on the top flange, three tacks down the side, two tacks on the inside on the bottom flange. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna stitch weld it. You wanna keep in mind, we don't wanna just weld the whole thing, right, all the way around, because we can overheat it and warp it, and that could scoot our rear end around and it'll be a miracle if it's in the right place anyway. So what I'm gonna do is stitch weld a little bit and then I'll go to the other side and I'll do the opposite to try to counterbalance it so we're not pulling it up or pulling it down or pulling it to the side any. So let's get started.
So after about every four welds, two per side, I was actually stopping and taking about a five to ten minute break, letting the frame cool down. The farther I got along, the longer those brakes had to get just because everything was really heating up. Um, I don't really know if it's terribly necessary, but I'm not going to take any chances. I don't want this thing to warp, so I'm going to take my time, let it cool before I try to weld it. So right here you can see me taking the time to practice on that scrap piece of the frame and getting my settings right really let me get some good penetration on the frame. Alright, so that's the outside of the frame rails. There's a few tacks on the inside. I'm going to let this whole thing cool overnight and weld the inside tomorrow. Alright guys, this is the end of the first video. I thought this would be a good place to stop it and break it into two parts since we are already over 20 minutes. The next video will cover putting everything back together. We're going to go over the reinforcement plates, how to drill those out for the cab mount brackets, and get all that stuff reinstalled. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down below. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I am on Instagram at Offroad Farm. I can update there more often than I can here.